Okay, so um, if you guys are unfamiliar uh, with Kakos Industries, I, I feel like I should say that um, I like if you, I don't, I don't see any small children, so we should be all right there. But if you're uncomfortable with like uh, R, R-rated language of any sort, uh, then uh, this is probably not for you. Uh, it's gonna get weird, guys. <laughs> What you are about to hear is an approximation of the opposite of the worst thing that has ever happened to you, or an impossible rendering of your best day ever. Hello, new Cocos Industries shareholders. My name is Corin Deeth III, and I am CEO of Cocos Industries. It is my pleasure today to welcome you into the fold. As you may or may not recall, due to several tiers of protective measures, your new shares in Kakos Industries are non-transferable, nor are they burnable, shake-offable, drownable, exorcisable, nor launch into space in hopes of dumping them into an alternate universe a bowl. It is my pleasure today to open the doors to our most recent, as of five minutes ago, most uh, crushable in terms of boot force and least impregnable in terms of teenage impregnability indoctrination facility and give you our newest give you our newest shareholders an overview of what we do as a business and what you can expect from us now that you are enjoying the cozy hand hug of being in our clutches as you've probably gathered by now Kakos Industries is a corporation that specializes in helping you to do evil better why are you shareholders you may have done something evil. You may have stumbled into evil totally by accident. You may have been born with the evil taint and have since been unable to shake it. We don't really know either. It's best just to roll with it. Now for a quick shareholders FAQ. Corin, how do I do evil better? Well, we really need to examine how you're doing evil now to give you a good answer to that. But let's just assume you're in the business of farming. You should consider fertilizing your crops with the blood and entrails of your slain enemies. Or growing evil vegetables. You know the ones. What can I expect from being a shareholder? Nothing and everything, and a little bit more. You probably won't die. Not right away, anyway. And certainly not in a way that can ever be traced back to us. What exactly is evil? For the last time, Facebook fans, that message bar is not a Google search. <laughs> what is the meaning of life? Not much. The universe cares very little for your life. If you're curious how much the universe cares, then to divide the mass of your body by the infinite cosmos, multiply that by how much you care, and then multiply by 100 to convert that to a percentage. Why should anyone listen to these announcements regardless of their shareholder status? The Kakos Industries corporate shareholder announcements affect all of us because Kakos Industries affects all of us. You don't want to get caught behind when something goes down. You don't want to get caught up with those supposedly good people who pretend they don't know we exist. You don't want to get eaten by bite wolves or any number of other monsters. Do I have options here? Not really. Your, shareholder, your status as a shareholder will only end when you die. Certainly there are other evil companies, but you're in the best hands you can be, and that's probably for the best, because you can never change your allegiances. Just how big is Kakos Industries? Well, no one really knows, as far as you are concerned. Our estimates put it somewhere between big and unimaginably large. Perhaps one day you will find yourself in an encounter with one of our genetically engineered bite wolves with 10,000 teeth. And perhaps that bite wolf will act as an official messenger of Kakos Industries. Perhaps then the answers to your questions and many more will be left in the scars of your mangled flesh, and you will be thankful for the enlightenment that they bring. Maybe that bite wolf will be wearing a pink ribbon or something. Maybe that angry, snarling animal likes to feel pretty. We don't always use bite wolves as messengers, of course. We could someday send just a regular person to talk to you, but right now you're being kind of nosy and we don't like it. 
Why don't you, Corin Deeth the Third, CEO, know all of the answers? Uncertainty must make you really uncomfortable. That is just one of the things you'll have to get used to now that you're one of us. Also, there are just simply limits to how much a person can know, and Kakos Industries is a little larger than that. Refer to the handbook you will find under your seat, but be cautious because some of your seats are rigged to explode when they are looked under. As I said, you may need to grow more comfortable with uncertainty. Did we lose anyone? No? Good. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's move on. This broadcast, like all of your future broadcasts, is delivered to you on a brand new radio specifically tuned for it. In this case, that radio happens to look like a number of people sitting on a stage reading from scripts. <laughs> it's really amazing what we can come up with sometimes, is it not? And of course, we, we can spare no expense when it comes to impressing our new shareholders. The components of these radios are all of the finest, sexiest, most appealing varieties that money can buy. The sound quality is also the highest. The battery life is not great. <laughs> You can barely get 12, maybe 16 hours before they start to malfunction. They also have a tendency to get mean before the systems shut down completely. <laughs> this can sometimes be remedied by a chemical energy in the form of food, but you will not find a better sound anywhere else, shareholders. If there's one thing we like at Kakos Industries, it's celebrations. There is nothing quite as evil as having fun. Doesn't that just sound awful? Doesn't it sound like it goes against every fiber of your being, having fun just for the sake of enjoyment? It's like sex without consequences. Now that you have joined us, you will have the opportunity to enjoy numerous festivities, ranging from the blissful, to the enlightening, to the downright crunkening. <laughs> shareholders get to enjoy our largest celebration, the Shareholders Ball, which features a feast, some dark entertainment, and everyone's favorite, a blood orgy. Other festivities include the celebration of self-love, giving you the chance to do you. <laughs> the actual Renaissance Festival, giving you the chance to experience how awful it was to live at any point in the past. <laughs> and the Agriculture Festival, which pits the most aggressive Earth GMOs against the fiercest alien produce in the known, uh, known and unknown cosmos. But we don't want you to have to wait to enjoy our festivals, new shareholders. This is why we've created the New Shareholder Festival. It's happening right now. To celebrate, look around the room. Make eye contact with somebody nearby that you don't know. Now introduce yourself by touching their face with your cleanest hands. <laughs> Ask permission first. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> we know how to party with Pacos Industries, and party we shall. We do a lot of experiments at Kakos Industries, and we occasionally make some monsters. Sometimes these monsters escape during our broadcasts. It's not our favorite thing, but it seems to keep happening. <laughs> Today, I'm afraid to say, is no different. Now, seeing how you are all contained in this room, I must warn you of the danger. You see, we lost track of an invisible creature. It's also awfully quiet. We've narrowed it down. It is in this room somewhere, but our best tools have not been able to catch it. We are working as hard as we can in the meantime. It is extremely dangerous, and it can cause untold harm if it remains free. If you feel a light touch on your skin, more subtle than a breath, then the creature may be near you, or feeding off of you. You might not notice the effects of the creature feeding on you for some time, but moving a little might scare it off. So move a little. All right. Please be careful and pay attention, shareholders. Now to give you some perspective on what our work is like, I would like to introduce one of our best clients, Dirk Cornelius Sexplosion, the president of Giant Ass Robots, a subsidiary of Giant Ass Things in general. Working together with Dirk, we developed some of the largest, deadliest, unwieldiest robots that have ever walked the surface of this planet and others. These robots crush other robots. They destroy large buildings. They make lots of sparks. 
They spread their legs far too much on public transport. <laughs> Making these robots is truly one of the most macho things that can be done. Now without further delay, let's meet that pinnacle of manliness, that peak of masculinity. Dirk Cornelius Sexplosion. <laughs> What's happened? It's all been so far away, Corin. Okay, never mind. We'll come back to Dirk later. <laughs> Why is this so far away? One of the greatest parts of our work here at Kakos Industries is our very own university. Kakos University. At Kakos University, we enjoy the greatest pleasure available to us in academia, teaching people wrong. Kakos University offers coursework that fights so hard for progress that it holds all of us back and stretches the limits of how smug the truly ineffectual can be. I am joined today by Diane Andre, the director of the School of Men's Rights. Thank you for joining me, Ms. Andre. You're looking well. Thank you for having me. Please tell our new shareholders what it is you do at the School of Men's Rights. Well, Corin, as you know, there's a lot of angry men out there. They fear the future because they feel like they're losing something, something they may have never actually been entitled to. We like to take that anger and sculpt it and direct it inward on itself. We like to help them to hurt themselves. That is evil. Do you have an example for us? Of course, Corin. It's just commonsensical that if you want someone to like you, you can simply not do the things they have explicitly said that they don't like. Instead of teaching this, we teach our frustrated young men that they should decide instead what they think is right and go from there, no matter how many times the real world fails to live up to their expected outcome. Like insisting that a gross, objectifying compliment is still a compliment and therefore a good thing. That sounds like a bad tactic. That's only the beginning, Corin. In an effort to really isolate these men even further, we instruct them to follow their instincts and pursue this conversation on social media where it is certainly unwanted. Soon enough, they've insulted their target's intelligence, ethics, value as a human being, and prospects in life. And after all of that, they find themselves wondering why they didn't get what they wanted, which was probably sex. That does seem to increase evil, a lot. Forgive me for asking this question, but is it possible we've gone too far? Most definitely, Corin. This is a toxic, dangerous, and self-destructive path, only leading to more misery for everyone. So this movement can't possibly get anywhere. It never had a chance, Corin. It was misguided from the start. That is, misguided is one of our best professors in the BioTruths department, and she would never let her students make any progress toward whatever backward and contradictory goals they may have. And the end result is copious amounts of evil. Gobs, Corin. We've got so much evil, we sometimes catch ourselves blaming women for not giving us a place to put it. <laughs> Wow, it does not get better than that. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Diane. It's no problem, Corin. Thank you for having me. It's always so good to hear from Diane. We found her in a mental institution some time ago, and she really has made great strides. We are fond of saying that we all remember the days when Ms. Andrew was institutionalized. <laughs> for those of you who are curious, she was admitted for the hysteria. <laughs> I have a prepared statement from the Tautology Division. They write, all evil is evil. You know, they never really fail to blow my mind. <laughs> Let's move on. We are joined now by Amira Dazim from the Division of Unnecessary Beauty Fads. Amira, it is good to have you with us. Can you tell us about what you do here? Yes, Corin. As you know, beauty is a highly subjective thing. There has been very little consistency throughout the ages of what humans have considered beautiful. Parts of the body, styles, hair maintenance. The only consistent part was humanoid shape. That is, until we recently discovered ponies. <laughs> and you add to these fads. 
time spent becoming beautiful is largely wasted, Corin. It may enhance how people think of us, and it may make us come a little harder, but the amount of effort totally divorced the reward. And some fads go so far and beyond requiring us to bleach our nether bits or have saline injected into our foreheads in the shape of a bagel. <laughs> so we try to start fads that maintain our beauty standards, but in strange and difficult ways, it helps us to improve people. I understand that you are working on something new and interesting. Definitely, Corin. Our new project is going to take women everywhere by storm. They're going to need to have it, and men won't know what to do without it. You're burying the lead, Amira. The project is called More Vagina. <laughs> we're going to help women to have more vagina, and we're going to help men who like vagina get to experience more vagina. <laughs> I don't know basically anything at all about this, but it sounds dangerous. Well, there's no way to know what the risks of getting more vagina are without talking to your doctor, but you're going to want more vagina. Okay. Who, uh, who needs this project? Everyone can use more vagina. Corin. Of course, it does depend on how much vagina you have now. Some people can get a little more vagina, Others can get a lot more vagina. And how does this project affect people? We can't say for certain how more vagina will affect you, apart from providing you with more vagina. Is it like bigger? <laughs> it's more. <laughs> So much more. More vagina. Well, Amira, I am confused and intrigued. I think you've done your job. We're expecting more vagina to start wasting people's time, resources, and skin elasticity in the next few months. Perfect. Thank you for joining us. Shareholders, I have an update on that monster we accidentally let loose in the room here. I am told that we are now certain it is on the left side of the room. Now it's moved. It's on the right side again. I'm sorry, shareholders, we lost it. <laughs> Let's move on, new shareholders. I'm interrupting you, Corin. You can't move on until you've dealt with me. That's how this works. Moving right along. I don't think it's working, Melantha. I think something's wrong. It has to work, otherwise we'll just talk over him. I have another prepared statement from the Division of Goats. Stop it! We're they, interrupting you. They write, Ba, 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 ba. I'm sorry, did you hear something, shareholders? It's me, Melantha Merther, CEO of... Your biggest competitor. We have a complicated his romantic history and I like to torture you with that knowledge. It's just the most annoying sound I'm hearing. I, I don't know what it is. And it's me, Haley. I can do exposition, too. I am 20 <coughs> years old. I like to keep a lot of pets. I am ambitious, and I love doing evil. We've had sex a couple of times, you and I, and you punished me for using you to advance my career goals, and then I went to work for Melantha, then I stopped working for Melantha. Now we just like to have slumber parties once in a while for sex purposes. That's right, Corin. You can't ignore us talking about our bodies intertwining while we do things. Things. Lots of sexy things. Oh, sexy things. I bet you're thinking about it right now. <laughs> right now. Despite the wall of exposition that Haley provided us with. Oh, damn it. <laughs> yes, I got you. That sound is just really annoying. Corin, you fucker, if you're not going to give me a nice segue, I will just say what I came here to say. All of your new shareholders have made a horrible mistake by joining up with you losers. Aw, oh, snap! They should have joined up with me at... Because that's where 
the real evil is done. No evil undone, no evil left behind. We're trying out some new slogans. Sweet slogans. Anyway, I hope all of your shareholders are happy living their miserable, pathetic lives with you and your shitty company. Mic drop. <laughs> I'm really sorry about that, shareholders. Sometimes it's just best to ignore her. You don't have to worry, though. Our company consistently outperforms on numerous criteria, and not just the ones we've made up. <laughs> Let's check in with Dirk, the most masculine, manliest... You're still crying, aren't you? What if none of this means anything, Corin? Dirk, we've been through this. None of it means anything. Life is bleak and insignificant. Life is a bleak and insignificant existence on a moss rock hurtling through space. It's just... One of my factory workers was cross, Corin. Were you close? No! I didn't even know his name. No one knew his name. We can't even verify that he actually worked for us. How sad is that, Corin? No one will remember you. No one will remember him. What if no one remembers me? But we will remember you, Dirk. You're not a shitty factory worker. <laughs> You've already etched your name into metal plates and sent them into space. Your existence will be known. But I don't care about whether aliens know me. I care about the people. Who will remember me if I'm, if I'm crushed? Well, your, your wives will remember you and, and your husband. Your sex robots. I'll remember you. I mean, there's thousands of people you've hurt in terrible robot accidents. I'm sure they will remember you too. Or at least their families will. Why do we have to die, Corin? Because we deserve to, Dirk. <laughs> you know what, Dirk? Ordinarily, I'd like to help you out with this stuff. But right now, I don't really have the time. And I have to show the new shareholders the strong side of Kakos Industries. You're just going to have to cry it out, I think. <laughs> it's fine, okay? Let's get back to business, shareholders. Now that you are a part of us, it's okay for you to know about hell. Years ago, we decided it was only fitting for a company as evil as ours to look for the biblical hell. We didn't find it, but we did dig a really big cavern underground that we have since turned into a labor camp full of misery that we named hell. There wasn't a hell, so we made one. I have to say, it's one of our proudest achievements here at Kakos Industries. The people living in hell are forced to work long hours not doing anything particularly useful. Sometimes they move rocks from one side, of the, from one side to the other, then the next day they move them back. Occasionally they carve large burial chambers into the ceiling of hell for our most esteemed partners. Today I'm told that they were, giving, they were given an ice cream cone to split. <laughs> That was awfully nice of us. I'm now being told that the escaped monster is in the back of the room, feasting. It's giving off a very feast-like reading. It's just gorging itself on something. Does, does anyone feel anything? Are, are you aware of the monster? Now I'm told it's moved again. I'm now joined by Monica Dower, the head of our Division of Humorlessness. I'm glad to join you, Corin. Monica, I just have to tell you this I new joke I heard. I don't want to do that. Just wait, just wait. It's really Please funny, I promise. This. A rabbi, a satanic priest, and a seal hunter walk into a bar. I don't like where this is going. Just wait. So the priest looks at the rabbi and he says, belief is a powerful thing. This is terrible. I, I got ahead of myself. Hold on. They order drinks. Please stop. Just wait, it's going to be a good one. You'll never see it coming. So the rabbi asks for a moil, which is a drink. I hate everything about this. <laughs> no, wait, the satanic priest orders the moil, the rabbi orders a sazerac, and the seal hunter... Ah! Oh, okay, okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. <laughs> uh, so was there something you wanted to tell us about? It hardly seems appropriate now. I'm just going to. Monica Dower of the Division of Humorlessness, everyone. I'm now joined by one of our division heads, uh, specifically the Division of Economic Voodoo. Please welcome Gary Billsworth. Hello there, Cohen. How you doing tonight? 
It's good to have you here with us, Gary. Please tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, at the Division of Economic Voodoo, we define the future of markets all around the world using the finest faith-based methodologies. Tell us a little bit more about that. Just the other day, we sacrificed a lamb at the altar of Zeus, and the blood splatterings looked like a shamrock. So we invested heavily in the development of weapons of war. I think I see how that works. Could you give us another example? Certainly, Corn. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we cut the head off of a chicken and we let it run around the office for a while. We then noticed that its body came to rest with one leg pointing out, one leg bent. For that reason, we invested heavily in the development of weapons of war. <laughs> I'm starting to see how this works. Could you give us just one more example? The rule of threes and all that. Not a problem at all, Corn. Recently we hosted a bullfight, at the end of which the bull was sacrificed as well as the matador. And it told you to invest in the development of weapons of war. <laughs> Don't be silly, Corn. <laughs> that one told us to invest in organic tea. <laughs> you really cannot argue with that logic. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Corn. Oh, it looks like I got a letter from my grandfather. New shareholders. I get these letters from time to time. They are like regular letters, and then they, in that they have been written to me. They are like regular letters, in that they have been written to me by my grandfather. <laughs> but they are unlike regular letters, in that he has been dead for over two years now. Before he died and transferred control of the company over to me, he wrote a number of these letters telling me what to do in certain scenarios. Let's see what he says here. Corin, it's your grandfather. I can't be certain how many people will be sending you letters in the future, so I thought I'd clarify. I have a feeling the handwritten post will be coming back any day. If you're talking to new shareholders, please don't forget to tell them about our monthly free cigars and scotch selections. Shareholders, I have to stop reading there for a moment to tell you that we no longer offer free scotch or cigars. We, we haven't for a while, so this, this must be an old letter. Then he says, also the free drug samplers. We also don't do that anymore. Uh, it's not a moral thing. We were just losing far too many shareholders from the wild drugs we were concocting. He continues, make sure to give each one of them a firm handshake and a pat on the bottom if it seems appropriate. <laughs> to be clear, shareholders, it is usually not deemed to be appropriate to pat anyone on the bottom without asking them first. He continues, knock them dead. As for me, I'm writing this letter from up in a tree because I did some new drugs we developed and I jumped out of my office window. I don't know how high up I am at this time. I can't see all the way down through the branches. I'm starting to feel perhaps a little bit nervous, but I think they will find me. I decided to write this letter because I had a thought about new shareholders, but also because I'm hoping to drop it onto someone so they'll notice that I'm up here. <laughs> You're the best evil there is, Corindith the first. That was sweet of him. I I'm guessing he got down from the tree, okay? <laughs> I am now joined by Silky Wilson from the Division of Blacks and Blues. Thank you for joining us, Silky. Oh, you know what to do, Corn. You know how to do, too. Silky, I understand that you brought some words of wisdom for the new shareholders. Of course, Corn. Do what we do when we do here at Cockroach Industries. We do a lot of stuff. We do it well. Do what we do, how we do it is about evil. How about doing what we do down where we do it is about love. <laughs> love? Love? Love is pretty evil. It reminds me of a story, Colin. You see, when I was a little one doing what I did, doing stuff, I used to do a lot of stuff spending time with my grandpappy. He introduced me to doing this thing called playing blues. All the other kids were doing this thing called running around and uh, the homework. And, uh, but I'd be doing a lot of sitting, watching my grandpappy do what he did, strumming on the old string, doing the blues, even doing these songs. That did a reach inside of them, and they did this thing like pulling all the pain up from the depths and doing evil. So much evil he was doing his voice, 
And those six strings are cigarette bandages. Where do you find that evil so deep inside your body? You doing the things how you doing them? He laughed at me, he told me one word why he was doing what he was doing with them strings. He was like, call, call it love. Then he just kept doing what he was doing with those strings in his voice, how he was doing it. And I just kept doing what I was doing and listening to him play doing what I was doing when I was doing it. See, that's how the evil, that's how the evil, that's how the evil do what it do. Because that's how we do all the things it do while we do what it do and down when we do what it does. <laughs> that is a profound story, Silky. Thank you so much for sharing with us. You know how I do when I do it, Carl. I am told that the monster is directly in the center of the room. It's making an invisible, lewd gesture. I'm told it is exceedingly nasty. And if you happen to be close to it, you should be very angry about it. We've lost it again. Well, that about does it for our little introduction, shareholders. You didn't tell me you would be having so many guests today, Corin. You did not allow me to analyze any of them for malicious thought. Oh dear. Uh, shareholders, this is Helena Concudio. She was once obsessed with my grandfather, then she was turned into a living computer, and more recently she was given a robot body without my permission. She is single-handedly responsible for the death of hundreds of Kakos Industries staff. And several shifty investors. I have my eye on all of you. My high resolution robot eye. Helena, you really can't do that. You can't just kill people that seem like threats. This is Kakos Industries. Nearly everyone is a threat. <laughs> but I must protect you, Corin. I must keep you safe from harm. I must also help you to relieve you from your masculine urges. New shareholders, I would like to make it clear that I do not have sex with this robot. <laughs> sure. He most certainly does. What? We do things all of the time. What are you talking about? He tells me I'm his favorite lover. I have said nothing of the sort. He puts things in places and we both enjoy it. A lot. That doesn't happen. I have so many pleasurable orifices. I can do so many things. <laughs> Shareholders, she's lying about our invol involvement. Why are you lying, Helena? Because if they believe you have had sex with me, then there will be little in the way of you having sex with me, Corin. You will have already broken the robo-taboo in their minds. Helena, I need to get back to my new shareholders. Let's deal with this later. I will prepare myself to deal with you then. Shall I wait on my back or on all fours? <laughs> no, I, I didn't. Never mind. We've established already that Kakos Industries is large and difficult to fully grasp. That is why we typically do a segment called Things We're Taking Credit For Now. Things we have taken credit for in the past are little pieces of hair that look like bugs, forgetting to fast forward the commercials, and chronic traumatic encephalopathy. <laughs> Today we're taking credit for some suggestions that you have made, new shareholders. This might take a second. <laughs> because your handwriting is terrible. <laughs> I'm still here, Corey. <laughs> go away, go away. All 
right, do we have a, 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 a Christian with coughing on the back of someone's neck? <laughs> We're taking credit for coughing on the back of someone's neck. Not here? We get to do more then. Uh, <laughs> We're taking credit for drop bears. Aaron Brooker. Okay. We have a prize for you. Come up at the end. All right, and we're taking credit for. Oh, jeez. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, having to poop right after getting out of the shower. <laughs> Same group back. <laughs> Someone just asked us to take credit for their stepmother. <laughs> Is that individual here? Security theater. That's, that's all right. <laughs> so, if, if any of those were yours, come uh, come see us at the end. Uh, congratulations to our winners. They each get a bumper sticker. If you happen to disagree with anything we've taken credit for, then your new shareholder status will be revoked. I should make it clear that your shareholder status cannot ever be taken away from you while you are alive. <laughs> And we've decided to perform an additional Ruin a Life drawing for all of you today. You've entered your names into the hat. If I draw your name, then you have won the Ruin a Life drawing, which means that you get to choose to ruin the life of your nemesis. For time's sake, we'll just assume that your selected nemesis is whoever we draw next from the pile. <laughs> We have Ethan Cunningham. There's one. Congratulations on winning the Ruin a Life drawing. Your nemesis is Sharon Holden. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Sharon Holden. <laughs> we spun the Wheel of Misery well in advance, and the punishment it landed on is perpetual concrud. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry, Sharon Holden. <laughs> For the rest of your life, you will have some remnant of con crud. Every day of every year, even if you give up conventions forever, the crud will not fade. Our damnation and ruination squad will make sure of that. For good measure, Ethan Cunningham is going to get some wicked con crud this weekend. It'll pass but it will be unpleasant. <laughs> Congratulations on the win, and best of luck to you both. <laughs> Shareholders, hold very still. Be very quiet. Don't even breathe. We got him, the monster's dead. <laughs> and on my hand. That is disappointing. I should um, clean that off. Oh well. This brings us to the end of today's broadcast. 
Ordinarily, we would instruct you to destroy your radios. Under the circumstances, today's radios are far too beautiful and talented to be destroyed as such. <laughs> we'll take care of them ourselves. You are off the hook. We cannot guarantee your safety if you choose to stay near them, though. They are often grouchy and stubborn. Your feelings might get hurt. We always send out our broadcasts with a numbers list, and here they are. Please do not try to think about these numbers. They are for internal purposes, and keeping them in your short-term memory may make forgetting things difficult in the future. Believe me, there's some stuff coming up in your life that you're going to want to forget. <laughs> 14, 4, 27, 4, 18, 4, 4, 4, 13, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 5, 4, 4, 4, 6, 4, 7, 4, 4, 4, 5, 6, also composed by Conrad Mishuk. The introduction is read by Kim Aiello and the credits are read by Hannah Jones, who is currently making up her own secret language. Special guest appearance in this episode by Kim Aiello, Hannah Jones, Adam Mishuk, Lindsay Forey, and Anwar Newton. Check out CaucusIndustries.com Caucus for more episodes. There's also transcriptions if you'd rather read the Caucus Industries announcements. That's K-A-K-O-S-I-N-D-U-S-T-R-I-E-S dot -E com. Questions, comments, or a strong desire to collaborate? Drop us a line at inquiries at caucusindustries.com. That's I-N-Q-U-I-R-I-E-S at K-A-K-O-S-I-N-D-U-S-T-R-I-E-S dot -E com. If you like Caucus Industries, be sure to rate and review us on iTunes and Stitcher and like us on Facebook. If you're feeling down after this broadcast, have you considered supporting our Patreon? <laughs> All right, everyone, that's the... Uh, the If, if you if you want, but questions primarily. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I should have had a list of questions of things I wanted to ask myself. <laughs> the rest of my, uh, my people here. When did you first know that you were truly evil? <laughs> Good question, audience member. <laughs> Thank you, audience member. <laughs> I think to some extent I've always known. That Good answer. An evil answer. Thank you. Subpar answer. Which is evil. We've got, we've got a question out here. Okay, the question is how do we develop our scripts? I'm saying that for the recording. <laughs> um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I, huh? Crying. Um, um, you know, shaking my fist at the heavens. Uh, usually, I, uh, I I sit down. Well, I, I, I keep a I keep a, a, a Google Doc of like ideas that I have um, when I'm driving and stuff. And then and then for the most part, I just like sit down and try to write until it's done, or I can't like leave my house. So it's, it's like a. a like a uh, punishment. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a punishment. Right, punishment. <laughs> I mean, really, this, this, this is just, this is a punishment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. How did you all come together? Like, as a team? Like, what was the you guys? Um, I, I could use some help, actually. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> She's, she's so funny, the things she says when she's trying to escape. Um, 
Uh, I, well, these are these are all my friends uh, and my brother, uh, who is I guess it's sort of friend, right? Um, <laughs> so there's some there's some overlap in that Venn diagram. Uh, Venn diagrams uh, typically overlap. <laughs> So yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people I've known for a while. Some of us uh, we've met in college, some uh, in high school, some on uh, film sets. I have a film degree from ASU. Um, so that's yeah. Nice. Sick burn. Yes. When did you just wake up suddenly so and Just evil, yeah. Wake up and just sitting up and uh, upright out of sleep. <laughs> evil! <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I had a, um, I had a, uh, uh, an idea for actually a series of short films I wanted to make, but it was, um, uh, uh, they, they would have been really expensive. <laughs> Uh, like uh, having sets and like clothes and things that <laughs> so uh, then I started listening to a couple of other um, uh, audio drama type podcasts and uh, I thought oh hey that's that's an awesome format to, to do that thing because yeah. I don't I don't have to wear any clothes whenever I do. <laughs> you typically do I <laughs> How do you define clothes? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you ready to tell a story of Corn Beef Jr.? Or is that just something? <laughs> <laughs> How many of you are new to the show? Episodes are there currently available for these yeah. new shareholders? Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's 54 of the traditional episodes of Kakos Industries. There's also two bonus episodes from the um, from the other uh, the other side. The um, <laughs> there's uh, there's two episodes from Melantha's company. Uh, which I think are pretty fun. Yeah, but that one, that one's number uh, uh, 46, yeah, so okay. we have 56 now. Yeah, okay. Can I ever be a very Christmas? Cockosmas. Uh, <laughs> at Cockos Industries, we have the Festival of Anti-Celebration, uh, which is... Uh, where we where we decide it's okay not to celebrate. There's <laughs> also actual Yule. Actual yeah. Yule with a genetically engineered Krampus monster. Kako <laughs> uh, Krampus. Uh, yeah, there's two now. There's two now. Here's here's a guy who knows the show. <laughs> I better I better make sure that I know what I'm talking about. I, I recently I printed out all of the episodes because there are, as I said, 56 of them now. Uh, I printed them all out, and I've got them in a nice binder, and I'm just slowly reading through them again to make sure there's things I just didn't totally forget about. <laughs> so there's, a, there's, there's just so much of it. There, there are limits to how much one person can know. How, how long does it take you to make an episode? <laughs> like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had this idea that I want to do a totally improvised episode one day, where I just don't prepare anything in advance. It's going to be a headache to edit, though. Conrad? The, the longest part of the process is all more. It's quite the diva. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I, I have a follow-up question. Uh, as, I, uh, as a random audience member, uh, for the rest of the cast, what's your favorite recording story with Conrad? 
bunch of them uh, and then he calls me and goes want to do a whole episode and I was so stoked and then he's like you're gonna like the things I have to say <laughs> and I'm like yeah whatever I'm down for you know and so I go over I go over to Conrad's and, and he sent me the script and I had I read through it kind of and um, so he takes me out back into <laughs> this summer <laughs> It's summer, it's hot, and he takes me into the shed. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, that has like a lot of, that has like a... Um, we call it the studio? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it has like a drum set and all these things, lots of things I can like knock into that I should not be <laughs> well, we're real, with no air conditioning. Which yeah. is where I had recorded the first nine episodes myself. So. Uh, I felt like it really helped me get into character for like suffering and, and evil and... Um, uh, so the the episode basically has a perfume ad um, that when I got to it I like had no trouble. Blo- I don't think I had any trouble with it. I had trouble somewhere else. But I was really hoping she would have trouble with it, and but, then she did it. But it was literally having to whisper, "Young pussy," repeatedly <laughs> like this, "Young pussy," <laughs> like, into a microphone, and then I was just like, "My mother can never." She was like, "Where are you going? We're going to record this thing," and she's like, "Oh, can I?" You know. <laughs> my mother listens to every episode. <laughs> my biggest fan. Um, yeah, so that was that was fun, and um, yeah. Con- so con- so con- my, my, my defense here uh, is that in that episode, I was I was making fun of this ad they had on Hulu a lot at the time, which was this like perfume ad where. Um, uh, it was just like this very obviously like you know male model in his like 30s or whatever and he was just carrying what was like definitely a 16 year old girl on the beach and so I was uh, I was uh, drawing attention to the uh, ugly side of um, I guess how advertising works <laughs> my favorite also I just like... want her to say young pussy <laughs> <laughs> he just like, had me keep saying it and then um I think my favorite was like, yeah, I like that. Can you do it better? <laughs> so that was perfect. Can you can you do it better? <laughs> yeah, like just keep a little emphasis on. The pss- <laughs> 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 yeah, that's great. I have um, many takes of that line. Yeah. <laughs> many takes. Um. Yeah. I mean, um, I like all of Lindsay. Lindsay's really great at the um, robotic. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I just have, I have fun with Conrad. It's just like uh, when he tells me to do things and I think I do them, and he's like, yeah, 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 <laughs> better. <laughs> so, but it's, it's great. He's great. Do it again. Not do it better. <laughs> yeah, I, I might have to echo you on, on that one. But then again, a monotonous voice, not having to say what you've had to say, might be easier. Um. Yeah, no, it's... Have to make Lindsay say more stuff. Yeah, yeah. If anyone has any other questions, you can just raise your hand. Do you guys have How often do you put out episodes? They are twice, twice monthly. How long have you been doing for them? Since, uh, let me do math here, was it February of 2014? Mm-hmm. The, the, it, 
was the, the 15th of February, I think, because I started mid-month. So it's... I think there was one month where you had a, a hiatus. Yeah, yeah, I, I took a month so. off. I won't. There was like technicality, Perfect. but... So, uh, if you guys, uh, oh yeah, so for those of you who uh, want stuff, you can come get it. And uh, we've also got smaller stickers for everybody. If you uh, want a reminder of, of how to find us and, uh, and what to, you know, where the, the website, so you have like it on a, a sticker. Um, <laughs> and I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for coming. I really appreciate uh, having you guys here. We have a very uh, widespread audience, so it's great to actually have some people in the same room as me. <laughs>